Okay, so we should restart. Um, so what we are going to do in this hour is to start is to start this exercise. That's a, a follow up of the of the exercise that we have done so far um, from a start a starter project. Mm, just a template. So what do we want to do? First of all, we want to design the APIs and reason on some specific choices that we are going to do, mm, to act on. And then using the SQLite database, you defi we defined, but also you defined in week three, mm, so more than almost two months ago, uh, we are going to write, to start writing the API for our server. And here there is a note that the design phase does not have a single solution. Uh, and there are many options to explore, and we will try to explore some of them together, just to understand pros and cons, but clearly it's not, will not be omnicomprehensive, but we just to reason on some options. Mm, so we will start this exercise and let's start from the URL. Mm? So here we have a template of APIs and let's think about our React application. Mm? So we have an application to get all the questions, get a single question, get all the answer to that question and then we want to add an answer um, vote for an answer edit an answer and and similar operation we can also add a question if you want but hmm, let's remain in that topic hmm, more or less what we do for react q a and let's write the api in this format hmm? so a title a URL, a method, a description, the body, if any, the response, and the response body, if any. Okay? So, thinking of our React question and answer application, which could be the first API we're going to write. Let's start from, other question is a valid answer, clearly, but let's start from the things that, if we imagine, we have in the application. So the first page of the application is, for instance, the form page. Home page, what is in the home page? Yes, but what is inside the index page? Questions, the list of all questions. So the first API we can write is list all questions. Which URL we are, uh, do we have for listing our question? Thinking of what I've said in the previous hour. Questions. Yes, slash API, it's always best to start the API with slash API, just in case the server also provide other non-API route. So slash API questions. Because, quest why questions? It's because it's a collection. Method get description well um, get all the available questions request body no request body response how do we reply This is not the response body, it's how do we reply in addition, event optionally to the response body. That is the response body. The response. That's the response body content type. Two hundred. 
200 OK in case of success. And in case of errors, what we can reply? Uh, no, why not found? We, we surely... 500, 500. Zero, zero. It's, it's an error. If we don't get the full questions, it's probably an error. It's difficult not to have, not found. We have all the questions. What, if we don't found any question, the application is not working because it's empty. Okay? So, uh, for 500 is internal server error. And it's a generic error. Response body? Okay, here we should write a short example. Hmm? So it should be, for instance, um, an array of objects, and let's write one, which are the property of a question that we have. Okay, first the ID. In this case, we need the ID because the ID is set for the server, then we have, not the title, uh, the text. Uh, and first answer, uh, let me copy one of the answer, is one of the question. Is JavaScript better than Python? And then we have author, right? That was Luca. And then we have, no, sorry, that was me. And then we have a date. That was the 2nd of February. Do we have anything else? I don't think so, right? So if we look at the model, ID, text, author, and date. This is the same model that we were using in React. So. And then we, sh we can provide another example, but, hmm, but it's, it's an array of things hmm, in the response body. Good. Let's do another one. So let's continue thinking of our application. We have all the questions, and then we have a page with with answer to one specific question. So what do we need? We could be another API that we're going before doing the one of the answers. We can get a specific question. So get a single question. The URL is Somebody else? API questions ID. And here you can write ID whatever you want. There is not a strict formalism. It's not express. It's just a text document. Like this, with colon, whatever you prefer. The method is always get. The description is get the question um, represented by the ID, the response, this one, or we need to change something? We need to add not found. 404, not found for a wrong ID. And we keep 500 for a generic error in the database the query and the response body what will be sorry yes let's say this one let's say that we are getting the the first question so just the object with the question ah uh, no Hmm? with the same representation because we are using the same object okay 
then we could go we can do the create a question but we don't have it in the application it makes sense to have a create a question but we don't have in the application so we can skip it for now hmm? so let's do the answers let me copy this uh, to have a template oh, let me copy the first one to have a template so what we need now moving to the answers Yes, that is. Sorry, can you say that again from the beginning? List the, the answers. Yes, list um, all the answers of a given question. URL. Sorry. Questions. Slash ID. Slash answers. Because it's a relationship, again, we want all the answer to that specific question. We don't have answers in this format without a question. Method, description, you get all the available answers for the question identified by ID. Um, do we need a request body? No. Response. Like this or different from this? Yes, we can have the 404 in case the question is not available. So like before. And the response body, what will be? And here you can also write uh, something like a JSON array of objects, each describing uh, an answer. If you want, you can also add a textual description of the example. But what we will have, what is a JSON array of objects, each describing an answer? What we'll write here? No, here we have just, we are, you know, list all the answers. So, no questions, only the answers. Array of answers. And which are the properties of an answer? Okay. ID, um, text. Wait, let me write some text. Um, yes. Um, a score. We call it score, but you, well, score was minus 10, date, do we need anything else? Name. Sorry? Name. Yes. Author. Name. What is called name? Now, where is called the name? Here. And? It doesn't matter because it's like another application. So, uh, first things to keep in mind is that uh, clearly if we use the same name for everything is easier because we don't have to reconvert, etc. but it's not mandatory, right? We can have something that we call in the client that is called differently in the API that's called differently in the database because each of them can have their own rules working so not only naming first things then you were saying <clears throat> okay do we want the question ID no. <laughs> why not For instance, yes, we have a question in the URL. <laughs> and then another more, let's say, philosophical reason. Is the question ID a property 
that represent the answer like name, text, score and date. No. It is a property that we add in JavaScript and we add it in the database because we because how the database work? Because the database in a uh, relationship one to many needs to have a column that is the external key. But if we don't use a SQL database, we use something else, maybe we don't have that column. And in JavaScript, we decided, well, I decided to have answer outside the question, but I could have had the answer list within the question. So there is no need to have the ID in that case because that's a different representation. So the question ID is not strictly related to the response, so we can skip it. It's a decision. You can also decide to keep it. But we can skip it, first, because if we need the information, we have it in the URL. Second, because it's not really a, an information of the, um, of the answer. Is a mistake if you add it? No. It's just different motivation. It's just something to be motivated, explain why you add it. It has implication in the code then, hmm? having or not having it. But it makes sense not to have it, because it's not one of the property of the answer like text, author, etc. Okay. Then, what we need to do after, after listing all the answer, Mm, before edit, let's do another thing slightly simpler than edit. Add. add. Hmm? We want to add an answer. So create a new answer, and then we also do edit um, for a given question. URL. No. URL. Does change the URL or not? Same URL. What is change here? Is the method? Is not a get anymore, but is a. Hmm? So we said we post on the collection to create the individual. We post on the collection answers to create an individual. Hmm? Uh, description. Uh, well, create a new answer for the question. Blah blah. Response. This is different from here. So in case of success, which could be the code for success? T01 that is created. Because we, if it's success, we created the question, the answer. Or, 503 in case of generic error. And then we said that we need to validate the input, so we can also add that if the uh, request body is not valid, we can give a 422 unprocessable entity. That is a validation error. And this applies to all the posts, actually. Like the others apply to all the get. Okay, do we need a request body? And what do we have in the request body? So this will be a JSON object, right? Representing what? A new answer. That in practice means, so an object, what we put inside the object? Yes, the property of the answer, which are? Is it a, like, is 
not ID because the ID is created by the server. It's not by the client. You, you have to think that this is, and it's one thing that you have to keep in mind. We have one server that is providing this API, but we don't have necessarily one client. We can have 11 clients looking at data, inserting data on the same server. So the server is the source of truth for the information. So it's the server that does the operation for everybody. It's not the client deciding things like the ID. Because if the client decides the ID, then another client decides another ID, and they don't have a synchronization between them. It's the server that should design the common information for everybody. Hmm? So it's a centralized way. So we don't have the ID, and we have everything else. So let me copy from here. Basically, we have the text, the author, the score, and the date. And the idea of the question is in the URL as before. So still no problem. And here we can say uh, the, oh, this question number two was uh, how many students the application has. And so a response will be the Italian course as around 230 first time student enrolled students and the author could be the teacher of the Italian course and the score would be zero and the date could be today okay the score do we need to add have the score here no any other opinion Yes? How many say no? Okay, how many say yes? Okay, the others say maybe, don't have opinion. So in this case, the answer is yes, because of what he said. Score is a property of the resource. And if we need to pass the entire resource, we need to pass score, because it's, it's a property of the, of the answer, the score. It's not something different in our representation, in our idea of the answer. So we need to add the score. But what we will do is what we already did in React. When we add a new answer in React, do we allow the user to add the score? No. Because the score will be by default zero. So as an API, it makes sense to uh, accept a score. I can check, for instance, that the score will always be zero in the server. And in the client, I can enforce that the score should be zero. So I will not allow the people to. So I, will, I can do extra controls if you want. But it's a property of the answer. So either is not anymore a property of the answer, and we decouple it from all the answers. We create a different resource called score. And we link them to this, like we did for question ID. Or if it's inside, it should be represented, because it's, it's actually part of the representation of the answer. Uh, do we have a response body? No. I mean, it's optional, but let's say no. What will be the, the, the response body, in theory, if you want to have one? Uh, no, because this is the response body for creating one answer, so the, the response will be the answer itself. So we will get back basically the same things we send in the request with the ID. Hmm? So it's fine not to have it. Uh, the, the information we, we really want Sometimes it's the new ID. That the, could be the information that we want. Okay, then update. I'm sorry. Yeah. About the score field, uh, is it part of the validation to check if score is zero? Or we, we uh, the score so the validation checks, well, it, we can, okay. It could be part of the validation. It can, 
it will be hard to do it with the validator, the automatic validator, because let's say it's a number, it's not a number, it's an email, it's not an email, etc. And here you can say it's a number with minimum zero and maximum zero, maybe, if it works. But yeah, it's something that you can validate in that method before doing the insertion in the database. Or you can replace to zero, because whatever you pass, is, it should be zero in that moment. So you, can, you don't care, actually, of the value, you just replace it to zero, for instance. It's a choice. But yeah, it should be could be something that you do in the validation phase, sort of validation phase. Uh, about the store, uh, are there databases that are capable of managing uh, default values for parameters for parameters that we didn't mention in the, in the mm. API, for example? Yes, there would be default values in database, also in SQL database. Uh, but this is not the database, this is API, right? So this could be the same API. So the idea of having an API la layer is that you can have uh, a, a different implementation behind, but not changing the API. Yeah. So in our case, the resource that represents the answer has those fields. So independently how these things will go in the database that we don't know, we know because we are going to do it. But a, a general reader of this document doesn't know if it's a SQL database, it's a NoSQL database, there is no database at all, you don't know. It, since the representation of the answer includes the score, it should include the score. And then yes, you can not validate and say, okay, I just delete the score because it's a database that will add zero as a default value. So I just don't read the field. Whatever is written, I don't care. It's not replacing zero. Since when I implement the server, I know that the database has a default value, I can get read. I just don't read that. If whatever it passed through, I ignore it. That's another option. But it depends on the implementation. And all this depends on the fact that we decided the score is a property of the answer also. So it's, it's the part that we say here in the exercise. You know? API design doesn't have a single solution. There are options. So this is an option. We decide, we make a decision. I made a decision in the past to have score as part of the representation. And now we leave the decision. Or we change the, the assumption, we change everything back. OK, let's do the update that is very similar. And then we do another one after the update, and we can move to coding. OK, update an existing answer. URL. Like this. Yeah. Do you like it? No. Okay, so since you don't like it, how we can, can change it? No, we need the idea of the answer to update. Yeah, clearly this is put. But we need the idea of the answer. We need the idea of the answer. So we cannot update an answer without knowing the identifier of the answer. We can go for something like answers ID. Yes. Uh, also, the other option makes sense. But this makes more sense. Why this could make more sense? Let's wait. <laughs> Are we interested in the relationship in this moment? No. no. Do we care if we update an answer, if it's an answer of a question one or answer of a question two? No. no, because we want to update an existing answer, some field of that answer. So the relationship now, it doesn't make sense to keep the relationship. In place, we make sense when we create something because we need to know which is the question we are adding the answer to, or when we list because we want the answer to that specific questions, not all the answers, right? But here we need to update an answer, so the URL is also valid in this way: the collection, all the answer, and the idea of the answer. And then it doesn't matter if it's question one, two, three, four, eleven. Hmm? So API answer ID put uh, update. Uh, 
an answer identified by ID. Do we need a request body? Yes. And let's say that this is the request body, so that doesn't have to, to copy and paste with, um, I don't know. And the response, do we need a response body? Not strictly, like before. Well, the response will not be 201 created because we are not creating, but will be just 200, okay, for instance. And then 503, and then unprocessable entity because also in this case we need to validate no, the inputs. So, okay, the last one. That's the trickiest one. vote for an answer plus one let's imagine also that having minus one yes yes actually yes also four or four in just in case we are trying to update something that does not exist yes uh, wrong idea So, vote for an answer. That's tricky. This is the introduction. That's tricky. So, how do we vote for an answer? Okay, it's a put. Let's go through this. It's a put to which URL? The same URL as before? Mm. Something like this? Hmm? vote slash id and vote is a collection no as an identifier no so but let's say that the url makes sense so vote is where okay so let's follow what i said to you before so before I told you that if we want to update a resource, because score, what is score? It's a properties of an answer. So before I told you that we want to update a resource, we should use put and update the entire resource. So we can do patch and update a partial. So let's not use patch. So if we want to update the entire resource, we are going to do the same things, basically. Uh, in which we just write something like this, right? Uh, following what I said, if we want to update even partially an answer, we should update the entire answer. What's the problem for this? Because there is a problem in doing this. It's working clearly. It's not. This is not working. But there is a problem. Well, mm, yes, but we can say, I can also say I don't really care because the point is that I need to update this field. So it can be another URL. Let's say that this is a URL, but still everything else remain the same. Is good for you or not? Which is the problem? There is a problem in doing this. Independently from the URL, let's say that you want to change the URL. And maybe we do a post because we post a vote so we are not updating a resource we are just posting a vote we don't know if the score mm. 
could be, but there is a bigger problem. Well, we know the score of the answer because the client can ask the score from the get answer. We'll get uh, four, and so does plus one, and we send back five. So, in that perspective. And validation we can check only if the score is modified, but still, there is a problem. But the server already has access to the, all the others and also the client because we'll need to, to display all the, all the information anyway. Yeah, there is clearly all this information are not needed because they are not changing, right? So there is more information sent than the information that we need. But there is actually a problem, a real problem. This is not performance. You're also updating the other fields? It's performance. There is actually a real problem. <coughs> So I have score four in my application. Now he has the same application open with score four. I press up and he press up. The resulting score should be six because plus one, plus one. But I send five because I see four and he sent five because he see four. We are two clients. So the resulting score in the database will be five. We are missing a vote. That's the problem of sending something like this. Hmm? There is a race condition in the server because the one client doesn't know the other client what happens. And the clients are not synchronized except when they read on the server. So we cannot pass five or six. We cannot pass the final number because we don't know if anybody else made a change in the between. But still, the history means that I ask the server the history, right? Or more logic on the server, you say. So I receive a five, I receive two fives, I get four. And so I should say, okay, these are two fives, two requests, so I should do plus one, twice because I have two requests. Yeah, mm. So. What about something like this? So instead of manipulating an answer ID that we, we don't have because we said, okay, this is vote actually. Hmm? So we can upvote or downvote an existing answer. Identified by its ID. Hmm? So upvote means plus one, downvote means optionally minus one. Hmm? And the request body could be a JSON object. Uh, representing the action we are changing model we are not we are creating a new razor that is the vote in a way and so here we can have vote something like upvote is moving away from the structure resources update resources etc because we have an action that a client doesn't know what another client is doing in a HTTP word because it's a request response. So we have information only when we ask for information. So instead of saying the score is five, that is a problem because we lost another vote, for instance. We can say I want to add one or I want to remove one. And then it's the server say, okay, it's upvote plus one. I receive two upvotes plus two, plus one, plus one, etc. 
So this is uh, a thing that, for instance, happens a lot as an error in the exams. When you have a client that needs to update a vote, a score, a rating, etc., and the client sends the results of the operation. Instead, it's the server that should calculate the results of the operation. Hmm? This doesn't happen with the text, the date, because it's a replacement. It's not plus one. It's not dependent from the previous value. It's just a replacement. Hmm? So this could be uh, a way to, to solve this, hmm? but the message is, is the server that should decide a value when the value is dependent from something that is from the previous value of the of the item of the property so in this case we can upvote or downvote and it's the server that will do plus one or minus one and the answer would be 200 okay or also 204 uh, no content it's the same and 53 service unavailable and for under 224 uh, unprocessable entity so this is uh, I left this for, for the last one because this is clearly different from the other model. For, for this reason, only for this reason, that multiple changes can happen at the same time. Okay, and then we can imagine, but we're not going to do now, but we can imagine to, um, let's say, add uh, um, a delete API, uh, add the question API, etc. but it's, the same things we did. Either add the question or add an answer are the same things. Uh, delete the question, delete an answer are actually delete methods with no body, no, no request body, no response body, just the ID of the answer of the question to, to be deleted. Okay, so any question on this? Now we are going to implement some of these things in Express. Is is another resource that we are just defining now that is not in the database and is not is not anywhere else but it's a resource we defined as a resource the vote that has two properties the two values up and down or up vote and down vote and it's a resource that at api level we define and doesn't have a corresponding on the on the database and it's fine it's written nowhere that you must have one api and one database I'll, everything is line is Actually, it's not, because it, what we have in the database is dependent from the implementation. This is not dependent from the implementation. Hmm? And, and again, this is needed because we use our request response um, model that is HTTP. Hmm? If we use another model, we, we, may be, we, we don't have the this, this same problem because everything is synchronized between clients, like publisher subscriber. It's another model, okay? Okay, so let's open server.js and let's start to implement this. So we need to install a little bit of things. Um, Express, uh, DJS, Morgan, SQLite 3. But not here. In the React uh, Query Server. So install Express SQLite 3 for the database, DJS for the date, and Morgan for the logging. And then in the project you have uh, the question answer model, that is the same model that you, we add in React, just with required instead of import, and for which we can delete the question ID for simplicity, since we don't have it in the API. So we can use the object as it without passing fake properties. Uh, the DAO, that is just a file that um, uh, opened the database and it's an evolution of what you had in, uh, uh, in the exercise four for week three. There you had a big object with inside this as a method. Now there is no big object anymore. It's just the method, list question, etc. That but the same query. Um, and it's get all the questions, get a single question, add a new question that we don't need, get all the answer of a given question, add a new answer, 
and there, there is two methods for update and vote that are not filled out. These are the methods for accessing the database. Uh, again, very, very similar to uh, week three exercise. And in server JS, we have the, the server. We have to write the server. So the first things we are going to write in a Node.js application. Use strict. Then we need to import all the things we use. So const express require express. Uh, const morgan, that is the logger, require morgan. And then we import also the file, dao.js, because we need clearly to access this information. Const dao equal require dao. Hmm? So, imports. Then what we need to do in Express? Mm -hmm. So in it, so we need to uh, create const app equal Express. And we can also define a port so that we, if we need to change the port, we, we have a variable with the port, but nothing fancy. And then we said we need middlewares. So set up middlewares. One for JSON, because we will receive everything in JSON, and one for Morgan for using the logger. So app.use express.json as a function, and app.use Morgan, open parenthesis, dev, always as a function. These, again, set up two middlewares available for the entire server from this moment on. So from this moment on, every route will accept JSON request and will transform the JSON request in JavaScript object. And from this moment on, a logger will be available. Hmm? That means that if you define a route before this line, you don't have this facility enabled. Hmm? So here we can say that we can define the routes. And after the routes, what do we need to, def to do? To start the server. Hmm? So app.listen, port, and the callback that could say server api api server started okay so the three parts uh, that we said before init and set up middleware the routes that we're going to write and starting the server so let's write a few of them, mm -hmm. but let's start with get all the questions. So get API slash questions. What do we need to write here? App.get, App which is the path. slash api slash questions do we need a middleware here do we need a middleware which middleware it's already available for everybody so we don't need to specify every time so we don't need a middleware here because it's already available and so we just need the callback Request response. 
It's a callback. We can define it with another function. Okay, so what do we do for API questions? We should return an array with the list of all questions. Who stored the questions? The database. So in the DAO, there is already a method that do uh, list questions that select asterisk, select, select everything from question, and in case of success, return an array with one question per each item using the function construction. And in case of error, return the error. Mm -hmm. So, and it's a promise. This is the same things you, you have done in week uh, three. Mm -hmm. So, let's, how do we want to handle the promise? With then and catch or with a sing and a wait? Let's call from your memory a sync and wait and then and catch. Which the two we want to, to use it? It's the same. Await. Well, let's do both. Well, one API with one and one with other. So let's start with then and catch. And so that you have two, the two versions. So one could be DAO dot list questions. List questions as no parameter. So dot then and dot catch. So what we write in the dot then? So the dot then is the successful um, result, right? So the promise that resolve. And the promise resolve sending back questions. That is an array of objects. So we will have questions as parameter and then we have an array of objects that already represent whatever we need and we need to send it to the client. So response dot um, sorry mm, no body is in the request body is a property of the request not of the response send 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 everything since this is a json should be a json we'll write a json hmm? that is send as a json uh, what we send questions that's it hmm? because we already build the object as we need since we didn't change the name between uh, or we did hmm? we call it author and so we we don't never to, to do any changes here. The catch. The catch is what happens when you have problems. We have an error. Hmm? So when these reject an error. Hmm? So what we said that in case of error we should return 500. So we can say response dot status 500 dot end and then we can also have dot, if we want dot send if we want to send a body instead of end but let's say that for now we want just to send 500 and no response back with the error but we can we can also write dot send and here something about the error that we receive so end and again, here we need and, here and is implicit. So when you use send or JSON, it automatically add and. When you don't send something, you set a status, an header, etc. you have to specify and. Otherwise, the call will remain stuck here. And it's the PI. So let's do another one. Let's do the other one, the other get. get API slash questions slash ed. Hmm? So getting the single API, the single question. What we are going to write here? Again. App.get, which is the path. Hmm? 
slash API, slash questions, slash colon ID. And let's do it with a sync and a wait in this case. So a sync regress is the same. You can write a request or response or regress or A and B. The important thing is the first one is the request, the second one is the response. Okay, so a sync await. If we want also to have the catch, what we need to write here? Try and catch. So what we want to try? Hmm? Yes, DAO. Uh, there is a get question that wants an ID. Where is the ID of the question? Hmm? Yes, it's correct. Say it. In the parameter. So rec.params.id. Hmm? And it's called ID because here it's called ID, the same name. This return a question. And what is missing in this line? A wait. Okay, we have the question. Now we need to, well, not, um, yes, send it back. Hmm? So, res.json question, like before. And in case of catch, we can do like before res.status 503.end. 503, uh, no, sorry. 500, always 500. Because in the readme, we define that also in this case is 500. And we can also have a, a not found that we should end all in the try. But I don't know, I don't remember if the, yes, undefined. So if question is undefined, then we should send res.status uh, 44.json question hmm? to handle the 44. Otherwise, here, in case of positive question, we will see the question. Otherwise, we will see, already, we will see question not found, just with the not expected error code. OK, and same things for the other gets, hmm? the things that change are the API and the DAO method. Um, let's do the vote. That's a post, it's a little bit more complicated. So let's keep a few. So post slash API slash answers slash ID slash vote. What we need to write here? app.post, which is the path. APIs, slash answers, well, this thing here, basically. With ID. Do we need a middleware? We could have the middleware validation, but we haven't installed it, so maybe after. And then a request a response. Now, what we need to do? We have vote up up vote in the body for a specific ID. So what do we need to do? Find, uh, 
find? Well, find if the answer is this, but this is something that the database will do. So before reaching the database, we, which, are, which are the information we need to pass to the database? Yes, we need to create the method in the, in the DAO. There is a method, but it's empty. It's called uh, vote answer. It will receive the answer ID and the vote. Hmm? So here to call it, so let's do it with a sync again. So here we should write await DAO.vote uh, answer, and it wants an ID and a vote. Where we get the ID? Rec.params.id. Rec Where we get the vote? How oh, it depends. We get it from request.body.vote. Hmm. So here we'll have a upvote and downvote. And then we need to handle it clearly, what means upvote and upvote. And we can handle it in the DAO, for instance. Or here, but we can decide to handle it in the DAO, for instance. And from here, okay, let's move in the, in the database, in the DAO. So here, what we need to do? Well, uh, first of all, return your promise because otherwise it's not working. So let me copy this. Let me copy this. And then I can delete things like this, like this, okay. Okay. So, what do we need to do here? Yes, or check or at least transform the up vote in plus one and the down vote in minus one. So we can say const delta equal uh, vote Triple equal to up down up vote then one otherwise minus one for instance. Hmm? So if the vote is up vote, it's called up vote, right? Yes. If the vote is up vote, we say plus one, otherwise we say one. Minus one. And we can also do more fine grade, like, okay, it's down vote, exactly down vote and not something else. But uh, to give you an idea in this 15 minutes left. Then, which is the query we need to do? Now. Update. Then. So let's do a uh, revision of SQL. Update. How do you update? A field in a table. Update answer with where answer is the table singular. Set score equal score plus uh, question mark. And then where ed equal question mark. And then we need to do a db dot run. SQL, the parameters, so delta and answer id. And the uh, function with the error, function. And here it's the same as before. If error reject error, otherwise resolve what we can resolve here. 
nothing also but if we want to resolve something what we can resolve here in update do you remember the updated the, but we don't have the full answer we have this this dot uh, changes if you remember so when you add something you have this dot uh, last ID, that is the last ID you added, and this, the changes is the number of rows that are affected by the change. So if this is zero, something is not, is not working. If this is five, something is not working. If this is one, it's probably at least reasonable that you updated one line because the ID should be one. Hmm? And you can handle this if you want. So here in the server, we can say that we const num number, this number of changes, for instance, and we can say that if number is equal to one, then we can send the status code 204.end, else we can throw an error with some content, for instance. And if all of this is a try catch, we can catch not only the error just generated, but also the error coming from the optional reject of the, of the promise with rest.status. Five or three. Dot end. Okay, and so similar things for adding or updating the answer. So let's try if this work. First of all, then because we haven't tried. So Nodemon, I already installed Nodemon. Uh, this is called server. So let me open a browser. So we can do the get. We can do the get with a browser. So localhost 3001 slash API slash questions. Maybe with the right port. Okay. And we get all the questions, as expected, in JSON, okay? And we can also try question one to see what happens, and we see the answer, the, quest, the, the right question. If you say question four, we got the error, question not found, we don't got the 404. We got 200, okay, and question not found. This is something we can fix, but at least we don't see the question. And if we want to try to vote something, hmm? so we don't have the, the list of answers, clearly, an API for the list of answers, so we cannot see the result. But if we want to try something, we can create a test.http, and we can write the post, to uh, API slash questions slash one slash no sorry was um, answers let's vote the first answer vote and and we need the HTTP 1.1 we need the content type A content type application JSON and we need a body that is vote upvote okay so let's open the database because it's the only way that we have to see since we don't have an API uh, implemented yet so the answer number one was yes and has a score of minus 10. Okay? So, 
if we send this request in which we, vo we won't upvote the question number one oh yes sorry HTTP localhost 2001 it does need the entire um, what am I missing okay a space um, a new line okay and we see the say not found because it got also this we shouldn't okay So we say no content, 204, apparently is fine. Also here, the URL is correct, is, um, is no content. And let's see if in the database we have minus nine. Hmm? So in the end, it worked. We don't have uh, an API. If we add an API to get all the answer, we will see also the, the results in the browser. We're doing a get. And if you want here, you can write other requests like get http localhost uh, like um, questions and you can also send a request and see the actual response also in this tool mm -hmm. but again it's the same as as postman for this okay so what is missing here is actually the other implementation of the other API. So answers, all the answer for questions, all the gets and the post and the other post and the put. But it's, it's basically the same things we have done here with just different methods. Instead of get question, you will have add answer, for instance. And they will do the query and you will handle the result, send the JSON back to the server, etc. Hmm? But the process is always this, the final get, a URL, uh, a path, and then write the code to handle the error or send back the JSON starting from the JavaScript object you have. Hmm? And I think that it's, it's enough for today. So if you have any question, I'm still here for five minutes. Otherwise, on Thursday in the lab, you will see, you will try Express and DPI with your movie. Uh, example and we will meet again next week uh, to continue speaking about uh, web applications so have a nice rest of the week <laughs>